Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gavinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at an app I've really been enjoying playing around with, that is Snakebud by Jim Altai. Now, I've reviewed a few of his apps, so if I remember and have time, I'll make a little playlist of those, and I'll put a link to it above, so you can go and check out those other videos. Another thing I want to say before I get started is that I've got five copies of any app by Jim Altai, to give away to subscribers to the channel. Um, so these are only for subscribers, but if you're not a subscriber yet, you can subscribe now. And as usual, follow the instructions in the pinned comment at the top of the YouTube comment section. Now, if you're not familiar with his apps, because like I say, today you've got the chance to win any app by him. So if you're not familiar with his stuff, just go to the app store, take a look, decide which one you, you would prefer to win, and then make sure you mention that in your comment, along with following the other instructions that I've written in that pinned YouTube comment. Um, another thing I want to say just very briefly as well, before I get stuck in here, everyone, is that um, I'm not going to be putting out a lot of videos over the next month because A, I'm kind of burnt out. I've been working super hard on this channel for a year, um, but that's not the main reason. Second reason is I've got two sponsored videos that I'm doing, and one of them in particular is just an incredibly complex project that is extremely demanding of my time. So I'm going to be very, very focused on those the next month. Um, I just won't have that much time for the channel. But like I say, you know, I've been pumping out stuff for a year. I really am, quite honestly, a bit burnt out. So... It's lovely that some of you guys are missing me and kind of complaining that I that I didn't put out a video last week. But all I would say, everyone, is, you know what, if you're missing me, go and watch some old videos that you haven't watched. It's that simple. Um, it doesn't need to be a new video. I'm so tired sometimes of the whole fetish for new apps in the iOS community as well. So I've done more than 100 videos, and I bet you, even if you're a channel regular, I bet you there are tons that you haven't watched. So, you know... Over the next month, make it an opportunity to go back and watch some of that old stuff. I will, from time to time, put out something if I have time. But to be honest, it's highly unlikely. All right. So thanks for your understanding there, everybody. And I do, you know, appreciate that you guys miss me. And I know that a lot of people love this channel. So that's great. You know, really, it means a lot to me. Anyway, um, what am I going to cover in this video? We'll do a walkthrough of... The features of the app so that you know how to use it. Um, I'm also going to just show, maybe suggest a few tips or tricks about how to use it. One thing that I'm going to cover that's going to be extremely useful for some people because I think a lot of people do not know how to how to do this is how to use another app which sends MIDI CC messages. For example, StepBud. I'm going to show you it with StepBud, but you could use something else. How to use an app that sends MIDI CC messages to automate pattern changes in snake bud why would you want to do this so that you can build up a bunch of different patterns in this i'll show you later how to do that by the way and then automatically move between them at a certain number of bars it's basically a way of creating a kind of song mode so i think um i mean i didn't know how to do that myself actually it wasn't very clear to me i had to ask jim and he was kind enough to make a little video for me showing me how to do it so now I'm sharing that knowledge with you. All right, let's get started. So I have uh, permission from Yerun, the dev of Tone Boosters, to um, tease this synth, the new Tone Boosters synth that is not out yet. And it's really cool, it sounds great. Anyway, this video is not about it, but I'm just gonna use it in this first part of the video. If you look at the screen here, you can get a pretty good idea what's going on, right? Let's just talk about that for a second. So you can you can see as it's playing that different things are kind of flashing. And if you notice, there's a certain order to the way it's moving around. You'll also notice that some things are grayed out. They're not being played. So this is why it's called snake bud, right? Because 
it basically moves around like a snake uh, going from one step to a neighboring step. But there are lots and lot there are lots of different sequences that you can choose. Like for example, here we're using sequence sixteen. Um, another important thing to notice is that not all of these are on. So what we do there is that we do that at control that in the step part. So if we see here the number of steps we got. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? 11 steps in this sequence. But if I wanted to make it 12, I just go to step here. Make sure that step is selected. And then choose any one of these other ones. Let's, let's just choose this one. So now it's a 12 step sequence. So, important to be aware that the grayed out things are not rests or something like that. So how do you add rests? Well, there are two ways you can do that. Either by gate, another beta there that a lot of people are very curious about, um, either by gate or by uh, velocity. So if, if we go into gate, right, we're, we can set the gate length for each of these steps. So basically, if you if you want um, a step to be a rest, just turn the gate length down to zero. Or you can do the same with velocity. If you turn the velocity down to zero, that may act as a gate as well. And of course, that'll depend maybe on the instrument that you're that you're playing. Let's see what it's like on this. Let's just experiment with it. Haven't tried this yet. So we'll try with gate first. So let's take this note and let's just. Turn to, let's maybe take a couple. Right, so you see, those are not being played now. So then we turn short gate. Of course, we're, we're going to then get a very sh short sound. Again, this will depend on the instrument that we're playing. Put on a long gate, we're going to get a longer, longer note. Now, very important then, the note section. So this is where we set the notes. Now we'll jump at this point already right into the settings dialog. So we click this cog down in the bottom right to open the settings. Um, what I want to look at here is scale. So we have a bunch of different scales that we can choose to quantize to. And I'm just showing you now what those are, major, minor, and so on. Take a look for yourself. Now there are no custom scales. This is your choice. But there are quite a few, including some pretty unusual ones. And of course, if you if you want to have all notes, just choose chromatic, right? So what did I have that on for again, I think? Ah, oh, that's... Yeah, see, these are not completely in alphabetical order because some of the more popular ones basically are near the start. Okay, so let's keep it for again. And then here we, we choose our key. Let's just keep it on C. Um, we can also choose... No, see, there's a little bit of a problem here. You've got to pull the screen down more to get all these options. So I could imagine some people could quite easily miss that, depending on the size of their screen. I wonder if we can scroll. Yeah, we can. Right? When, it's, when it's small, you can scroll. So that's good. So, yeah, you can see here, we can set minimum octave, maximum octave. Another thing to pay attention to is knob control style. If I remember, by default, it comes with rotary knob, which personally I hate. My, my personal preference is horizontal and vertical. So we can move these either by dragging horizontally 
or by dragging vertically. And there doesn't seem to be any difference between the responsiveness of those, by the way. Uh, so what else do we have? Um, probability. So we can set the probability that a note will be played. Set that separately for each step. And then we have a randomized section. So we can randomize notes. We can randomize the snake. So remember, that just means randomize the way it's moving around the, uh, the order that it plays these steps. Or we can randomize all. Um, it's really strange to me that this does not have randomized step, uh, randomized gate, randomized velocity. I just can't understand the omission of that. But I asked James, and he said that it, they will that will come in an update. Personally, I would like them to come right now because it seems strange to me that the, that, that, that the randomize doesn't allow you to randomize everything here. But anyway, at least it will be coming in a future update. But that is one of my little gripes about the app, that it doesn't have that. Okay, um, now then down at the bottom here, we have this pattern part. So what we just do here, if I want to copy this pattern, I long press on this number one. And then I go in here, and you can see that all, now the number two has been created as soon as I touch that plus sign. Then I long press again, and oh, it's showing up a little bit weirdly here. Maybe a little, need a little bit of work here, Jim, on this part. So, okay, press copy there. And then I click on the second one, and I can paste it. Hmm. Hang on, let's try that again. Okay, let's try this one more time. Copy. Go to number two. Paste. Okay, there we go. Right. Uh, so we can make as many patterns as we like. Of course, you don't have to copy and paste between them, but that would be one thing that you might want to do. And then you can just, you know, make fewer steps change some notes, change gates, change velocities, whatever. So you can build up your patterns like that. Um, now, then down here, we choose which uh, kind of sequence we want to play. So let's have a little listen to the kind of changes that that can make. So now we're on 17, 18, so we'll just move around in slightly different ways. So this is great because it's not, you know, it's not completely random, but it's bringing some mutations basically into your sequences. So we've got 24 of those. And then here we've got rate. Now one, again, um, to me, extremely strange omission. Why no triplets? Why no dotted? And people have asked for this. And um, I think that's going to be added in a future update. I'm not 100% sure. But I don't understand. Why is it not being added now? It's such an obvious thing. Um, sorry to be critical, but, you know, that's kind of what I do on this channel. Keep developers on their toes. So, yeah, we really need uh, triplets and dotted values added here, please, Jim. Okay, so let's look at how to automate pattern changes using StepBud. I'm going to step into a different AUM session to show you that. Okay, so let's see. Here we've got Pure Piano, which I reviewed a while ago and which I'm really enjoying. And we're sending SnakeBud into Pure Piano MIDI. 
and then here snake bod is receiving midi from step bod and then here we have step bod um so let's let's see this snake bod so if you look at this snake bod i've just set up two patterns pattern one and pattern two let me just put the sequencer back to the start i press play just watch how it'll switch between pattern one and pattern two you see it already just switched to pattern one there and now it's already on two now it's back on one So obviously you could set up as many patterns as you want, right? This is just a simple example. So how do we do that? Okay. Um, I'm going to show you first. I'll, I'll open up another instance of StepBud. Okay, so this is what StepBud will be like when we open it up. And then when we go down to the bottom... Uh, this very, very bottom thing. If we scroll along that, we'll come to this part MIDI. And when we open this, we go, go to the very bottom, Custom MIDI CC, and we choose Add New MIDI CC. And for SnakeBud, it's going to take these messages on CC10. So we choose 10, right? and press done. Now I'm going to close this instance because I've already set this up in this one. So what we do then is go into um, StepBud and here, we, if you see here along the bottom, this second row from the bottom, uh, there's a little thing here now that says CC10. So we select that and then here the sequencer opens up and we put in different values here. So, for example, if I put in one here, that means that's going to sequence pattern. When, when this is triggered, it's going to play pattern one in SnakeBud. If I choose two here, it's going to play pattern two, and so on and so on, right? If we, had, if we had a pattern three, we could just draw in three here, right? But let me put it back to one. So it works like that. Now, um, obviously, we've got to go to the rate section. And you can see here, what I've done is set it up that each step is going to be two bars long. Um, now, of course, you, could, you can mix and match this in whatever way. Uh, if you want something longer than two steps, then all you would need to do is just keep the values like let's say for example i wanted pattern one to play for um eight bars then in these first four steps i would just put them all as pattern one so if i had these four as one and these four as two the way i've got it set up at the moment it would play eight bars of pattern one eight bars of pattern two so that's how we set up uh step bud to do program change and as I say you could get a really complex with that you could have tons of different patterns here and set up a really interesting song um, now I want to show you another cool thing that I like to do with SnakeBud again I'll pop into a different AUM session so what I want to suggest here is don't forget that you can use as many of these together as you would like. You can build up some really cool things. One thing I like to do is set up one instance, get a pattern going that I like, and then use the duplicate channel function in AUM. So, by the way, if you're not familiar with how to use AUM, I'd strongly recommend the video that I did on AUM, which has been really well received. It's one of my most popular videos. It's called Almost Everything You Need to Know About AUM. I'll put a link to it above. Um, so to duplicate a channel, let's say I want to duplicate this. I just go down, click here, MIDI 1, duplicate. And if I press that, then it will make a copy of the channel. 
in the channel beside that. But I'm going to remove it because I've already done this. So one, th one cool thing you can do is just randomize a pattern or, or, you know, program a pattern, get something you like, then duplicate it, and then go in and just play around with the other one. You know, change notes, um, change the number of steps, change the snake or whatever. And one of the important things that I want to point out is to play around with the minimum and maximum octaves. So, for example, here in this second instance, I have set my minimum octave as 2 and maximum octave as 3. Uh, you can see it's Romanian minor, key of C. Uh, let's look at the first instance. So if you see here in this one, I've set minimum octave 3, maximum octave 4. Uh, that can go as high as 8, by the way. And again, Romanian minor and C. And then I'm playing Aparillo. Also, uh, people really loved this video. I mean, I love this synth. But this is one of my videos that I'm really proud of. There was a hell of a lot of work involved in this. Love this synth. So this going into Aparillo. And then here I've got Timeless. If you watch the this, this little shorts that I make, which, by the way, everybody, sometimes people complain to me, these shorts videos are too short. Uh, that's not my problem. <laughs> this is um, a YouTube limitation. Got some wind coming in from outside here on the mic. Excuse that. Shorts cannot be more than one minute long. And I don't want to make other short videos. YouTube treats shorts completely differently from normal length videos. So I, if I just want to show a very little sound example of a synth or something like that, um, I will generally make it as a shorts video. And um, if it's too short for you, just don't watch them. If you, if you like them, great. If you don't like them, just don't watch them. Because some viewers, again, kind of complain, oh, I don't really like these shorts. You know, I like your um, detailed walkthroughs. Well, I, I do both. And you just watch whichever ones you like, right? No problem. So uh, I already put out a little short using this. And here we have Timeless 3 by FabFilter. Absolutely bloody amazing. Sounds so great. So here we got just this first step bud. Sorry, snake bud. James apps all have such similar names. I often get this one and step but mixed up. And so then here we're bringing this one in, it's lower. Some nice low notes there. If we wanted we could bring this minimum octave all the way down to one. Right, and then again, you know, you can go in, play around with the sequences, randomize, play around with rates. I mean, that's a really cool thing to do. Get one at one rate, get one at another rate. Again, real pity that it doesn't do dotted and triplet at the moment. So I'm sure you can think yourself of the many, many possible creative uses of this. It's a lot of fun, sounds great, really just the kind of app that I personally tend to use a lot. I love simple sequencers. I love something that's just going to get a cool idea going quickly. Um, I like the fact that it's got these pattern modes. Um, you know. What really nice to, for example, set up, say, an eight step sequence in pattern one, and then go in, you know, copy it into pattern two, but make it just a four step sequence or change it into a 16 step sequence or whatever. And then again, as I showed you earlier, use something like StepBot to automate that. You can get really interesting things. 
So I mean, imagine what you could do if you had a few different, um, a few different snake buds and a few different step buds automating each one in different ways. And the fact that you can have as many steps as you like, I mean, you can get really interesting polyrhythms going. You know, all I've got to do is go up to um, step and uh, just turn on another step. Go and play around with some notes. So really nice just while you're performing to just play around with the notes. There you go, everyone. Simple but powerful. Exactly what the doctor ordered a lot of the time. All right, take it easy, and I'll see you in the next video. And again, if that doesn't come soon enough for you, go through the archives, watch some of the old stuff. I bet there's tons there that you haven't watched yet. Loads of great stuff. Loads of great older apps. It doesn't always have to be about the new apps, everybody. I mean, I love new apps. I get excited about new apps. Of course, I do as much as everybody else does. But, you know, remember, I mean, things like Aparillo. I mean, this is one of the best FM synths you could get. If you haven't checked, checked out something like this, you're really missing out. All right. See you soon, everyone. Thanks for watching and take it easy. And if you find this useful, please do remember your thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then obviously... Um, consider subscribing if you like this kind of stuff. All right, take it easy and I'll see you soon, hopefully. <laughs>